you know what time it is. It's time to replace this fire alarm system. So let's go ahead and get started. This right here is an Edwards horn strobe system, as you can see. And we're actually going to do a realistic upgrade here. We're going to go from Edwards horn strobes to new LED Edwards speaker strobes. So let's go ahead and get started with removing these old devices. All right, so here's the new system that's going in. And very rarely do I get excited to put up a system because it's kind of just labor. But this is the system to get excited for. This right here is the newest line of LED appliances from Edwards. You can see these are LED strobes. Check that out. Uh, I'm not sponsored, even though I'm saying good things. I genuinely just like the way these things look. Um, but these things are... If user-friendly was a fire alarm, that's what these things are. Look at this. You have a mounting plate that just goes on the wall, and then you plug the devices in. These things are small. I mean, when do you ever see a speaker strobe that's this small? So these things are super easy to install, easy to troubleshoot. This cover thing comes off. You can just select the wattage, candela, literally everything you would want in a fire alarm device. Of course, I have EST pulse stations. But wait, there's an extra speaker strobe and an extra pulse station. That's kind of weird. Maybe I miscounted. Who knows? Anyways, let's go ahead and get installing. So, of course, on the fire alarm panel, as you can see, I pulled out my knack wires, and these would traditionally go to the horns. But um, now I have to connect them to my speaker circuit, which is this handy-dandy thing that's usually off to the side. But before I connect anything, I'm just going to leave it be. I think I explained this several times before. But the reason I do that is because in the event that I accidentally set off the alarm, for whatever reason, um, I don't want to send speaker signal through my horn strobes or send 24 volts through my speakers um, or you know, any way around. Um, a lot of people are like, well, just unplug the terminal block. Well, that's useless because that's literally what I'm doing right now. I've disconnected the wires and before I connect them to this, um, I'm just gonna leave them be and then connect them at the end. So there we go. Realistically, if this was an actual job site, the only devices that actually need to be replaced are the legacy horn strobes, because of course we're going to speaker strobes. Since all of these devices are conventional anyways, they would technically just still work with the system. But in this case, since they're supposed to be themed systems, I'm gonna replace all these devices with newer Edwards signaling devices and pull stations and pretty much everything. So let's go ahead and remove these devices. Uh, these all have a tiny little screw at the bottom. And I don't know why this is flathead right now. Really annoying. Hold it like that. So you just remove this screw and then this thing pops off of the mounting base like that. Once you pull this device off the bracket, you'll see that our wires are folded pretty nicely. This is what I did the last time. I always try and make a little arc like this so that when you push the wires into the box, especially when there's this many, uh, none of the wires get creased and break. But now at this point, we have to remove the mounting bracket. So I guess I'll do that first. Um, I wish I had a drill. Well, I'm never finding that screw. Uh, I guess I'm not finding that one either, but it doesn't matter. So now I'm going to go ahead and undo these terminals. And I'm going to actually use two hands for this because I don't want to drop this. Terminals are loose now, so I've removed the device. So if this was an actual job site, this would go straight in the garbage because people usually don't save these things because they're basically just e-waste. This box is going to come down because it doesn't really match well with the new speaker strobes. I'm just going to use a standard 4x4 square. Fun fact, the new LED Edwards devices actually fit really, really well on tiny boxes because they're so small. All right, it's now time to replace this pole station. So this is one of the neat ones with the screw at the top. But um, we're going to go ahead and speed up this process with our nice little impact driver here. So again, just pull out these screws. I think that impact drivers are a removal tool because if you go ahead and use an impact driver and drive in the screws when you're installing stuff, a lot of times, especially with stuff that's made of plastic, um, you'll break the housing and that's really annoying. Um, even for metal boxes like this, it's very common for these small threaded holes to just get stripped and then that's a real big pain. Here I am removing the rest of the field devices. As you can see, all the horn strobes are coming down. Same with this pole station. Both of these conventional pole stations would technically get to stay, like I said. But because we're doing a full system replacement, I'm just taking everything down, including this smoke detector and horn strobe in here. And the bathroom strobe, pretty much anything unenhanced is getting taken down. Same deal out here in the garage. The only difference is I accidentally filmed these clips as videos, so I had to go and speed them up. But they're still not as fast as a time lapse, so that's really annoying. 
So I got to figure out how to talk and make up for the time. Something interesting to note here is that there's only one conduit tube coming out of this box. Just remember that. Um, there's one conduit pipe going up to the smoke detector and nothing else. Huh. All right, let's go ahead and start putting one of these things up. So I have to separate the mounting bracket from the device. Talk about an easy installation. I went ahead and put up a smaller 4x4 box. This is just my painted uh, 4x4 steel box, but I think it matches the device a little better. This mounting bracket just goes up. You got everything you'd want. You got keyhole slots, even little details like the fact that this bracket is pretty thick, but they make the um, place where the screw latches on a little thinner, so that way you can use smaller screws. Um, little details like that make a difference. So once again, this is the speaker side, as denoted by that symbol. This is the strobe or horn side or whatever. But um, again, everything about this device is easy. And I promise you I'm not sponsored. These devices were actually sent to me by a very kind person named Jordan. So thank you for Jordan. But um, again, you just wire it like so. And then once you're done with that, this device is so small, this can actually fit on a single gang box, which is neat. But you just click this into place. I think you just have to hook on the top like so. And then you just snap it in. And then you put on your cover plate. Actually, you make your uh, adjustments first. So this should be, I think 30 candela is good. I'm gonna put it on two watts and it's on 25 volts already. So once you do that, snap on your cover, bang. Look at how easy that was. This thing, there's no like trying to balance a speaker strobe on your hand while also tightening the screws. There's no shoving the thing in the box because it won't fit and your box is too small. This thing, you know, I'm going to stop. I feel like I'm saying too many good things, but Edwards, you don't even have to pay me to say good things about this product, but low key, you guys should sponsor me anyways. But anyways, let's move on to the pole station. This right here is an Edwards SIGA-278 pole station, but uh, I've taken the wires out of the module because I'm running this on a conventional system. So again, it's as simple as clicking these little Wagos, which technically might I add for most applications, something like this might not be uh, acceptable because especially for a conventional system like this, in the event that this pole station was to come undone, like this wire were to come disconnected, the panel would not know that because um, as far as the panel is concerned, this zone would still be continuous. So a lot of jurisdictions do not allow that because it's basically just a form of T-tapping, which T-tapping sounds like exactly what it, uh, what the name suggests. It's when you have, you know, let's say a continuous line of wire and then you just tee off of it. Um, that entire section that you tee off will not be supervised. Um, I'm not going to pretend that I don't tee tap a ton. Like there's several places on my system that are tee tapped. I think the most egregious places are probably outside. But um, again, this is a demonstration system. So I really just care about functionality. But speaking of uh, functionality, not only is this system functional, it's beautiful. Wow, what a system. Um, look at these LED devices. I feel like I, I, I'm talking too good about these things, but there you go. That's a completed installation of these two. So let's move on to literally everything else. All right, so I'm in the utility room right now. Usually for this room, I just kind of time-lapse the uh, installation because it's basically the same as everywhere else. But I'm not doing the same thing as everywhere else because right here, I'm not putting anything. What? There's no, there's no speaker strobe in here. How are people going to know there's a fire? Well, don't fear. There will be a speaker strobe. Um, if you follow the wires up, I basically did all these Wago connections. Um, and it goes up to this box right here which look at that it's a four by four box for a speaker strobe but wait you can't put a wall mount device on the ceiling oh <laughs> wait till you hear about this this right here is a ceiling mount speaker strobe get out of here isn't that crazy and it goes on the ceiling like this and this is what i'm going to put in this room so um no one's going to die because everyone's going to know there's a fire if this thing goes off and um you'll get the accurate candela coverage so put that up so our mounting bracket is up and it's actually the same mounting bracket as the wall mount units, which is kind of like the older Spectral or Defense series, but push that up there. All of our selections are already made. So now we can, oh, I have to go all the way back down the ladder. Come on now. And you put this uh, little cover thing on like so. There we go. That is one completed ceiling mount speaker strobe. 
Now we can go ahead and time lapse them. Now it's time for the time lapse. Every single one of these devices, maybe not the pull stations, but all of the appliances were super easy to install. Again, any device with the uh, plug and play bracket is generally pretty easy. I mean, there's just no argument that anyone could make that an older device is superior in terms of user friendliness and performance. I mean, this stuff is just wonderful. And I'm talking about all the brands when, when you have these plug and play devices. This is the bathroom strobe. As you can see, it's one of these small LED units, but they all sync automatically too, which is one of the nice perks Edwards has. But um, over here, this is a wall mount speaker strobe. There's only two wall mount speaker strobes down in the basement. Um, and there's also two ceiling mount units. Of course, they're all tapped at the loudest setting because I want these speakers to be audible. Here in the garage, I'm installing a pole station. Um, nothing really much to say here. Here I am installing a speaker strobe. I put the drill in front of the camera because I'm a dummy, but wait. You might notice there's a second piece of conduit coming up from the box and a second cable. What could that possibly be for? Check this out. All the devices are installed. I think this is the newest system I've ever had up. So it's quite the demo system, but the only thing left to do is test it. So let's go ahead and pull it real quick. Thank you for watching this video. Please do like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.